students we will take up another lecture ca foundation course accounting subjects accounting for depreciation we are going to discuss in this topic a very interesting link between a capital expenditure and revenue expenditure we have clarified that revenue expenditure or nominal accounts which are meant for calculating profit for an accounting periods whereas capital expenditure is an expenditure for acquiring long term assets whose benefit accrue to the business operations for more than one accounting periods so while both are expenditures revenue expenditure is shown in the profit loss account for calculating profit while capital expenditure is treated as an asset to be shown in the balance sheet for it is going to be useful for a longer period of accounting periods but all the expenditures are meant for generating profits while revenue expenditures are expenditure for generating profit in a specific year capital expenditures are expenditure for generating profit of or enabling the gener generation of profit for more than one accounting periods so how do you charge a capital expenditure to the calculation of a profits to take an a very simple uh, example to clarify suppose a machine has got a life of 15 years and your accounting period is also for 15 years that means you don't prepare your profit calculate profit every year but say you calculate profit loss account for 15 years then the entire cost of the machinery used during these 15 years shall be a revenue expenditure whereas in real world accounting period is for one year and the capital assets are acquired that is a capital expenditure is incurred for more than one year that is you buy a machinery in the year 2010 it will be useful in 2011 12 13 14 15 16 so the crucial link between the capital and revenue expenditure the total of revenue expenditure incurred in a particular year is shown in the profit loss account of that year Whereas the total of capital expenditure incurred during the year is distributed, is allocated over the useful life of that asset for the business. So if you acquire a machine in 2010 and is to be useful for 10 years, so from 2010 to another 9 years, you will be distributing the total cost of the machinery purchased over these periods this is what is the distributed amount is what is known as a depreciation there is another logic to understand here when you acquire fixed assets and you start using for your business purposes it starts depleting in its value its value gets reduced because of usage of course, some amount of value get reduced because of time and obsolescence, but largely it is value gets reduced because of usage. That means when you are using the machinery for the business purposes, to some extent the value gets reduced. Now the amount of value that is reduced is known as a depreciation, depreciating in its value. And that much is treated as a revenue expenditure and shown in the profit loss account while matching with the revenue for calculating the profits. It is this topic that we are going to discuss because the depreciation is an important item in the profit and loss account. So before we take a profit loss account preparation, I thought I will discuss with you this depreciation accounts. In this lecture, we will start with understanding what is an asset, etc. Then go to the idea of depreciation, methods of depreciation, 
and some relative issues. Depreciation being an expense, it will always be debited. Depreciation account DR to the asset for which depreciation is calculated will be credited. Since assets have a debit balance, when you credit them, its value gets reduced. That is what precisely the depreciation means. We have already understood assets. Asset, very broad definition, is a resource. The resource the company has, cash, machinery, land, other claims against outside parties, from which future economic benefits are expected to flow. It, that is, these resources you are going to use in the business, so that in the future you expect to get your economic benefits. You intend to use cash, you intend to use your uh, machinery, you intend to use stock of raw materials, etc. As against these assets, there are two classifications which we have seen, current assets and non-current assets. When we are talking about depreciation, we are talking about non-current assets or also known as fixed assets. These fixed assets or non-current assets are held in the business for use in profit generating process. Do not forget, every expenditure is ultimately meant for profit generating purpose or profit is the focal objective of a business. And this using the fixed asset for profit generation is a continuous process. You use it this year, continuously next year and next year like that. Not for sale in ordinary course of business. Obviously, you want to use machinery to generate profit much higher than the value of the machinery. Right? You put in raw materials, you put in the skill of your labor and other human resources. So therefore, this asset is not for sale. Fixed asserts are not for sale. Anything for sale, they will not be called as a fixed asserts. They will be called as an asset for sale. <clears throat> you may call them as investment. You may call them asset for sale, etc. So we are not concerned about those asserts which are meant for sale. Because they are not helping us in the business operation directly. Property, plants and equipment, these are the so-called tangible fixed assets. Tangible would mean which you can see, touch. Intangible non-current assets are like, you know, goodwill, patents, trademarks, development costs, etc. Investments held long term. Now suppose you have invested some money in some shares or in a bank for 15 years. Now they are also assets. Now of course, we will not be talking about that depreciation. Right. We will be keeping them as a fixed assets in our books of accounts. Intangible assets, no physical substance, but they have a meaning, they have a value, patents. Your company or your entity has discovered some new process methods or new invention which you alone have the right to use it. Nobody can copy it without permission. So patent rights. Right? You write a book. You have a copyright on that book. Which means the contents of the book is owned by you. Nobody can copy it without your permission. And you may give permission by charging some money known as royalties. Trademarks. Now you must have seen trademarks of, say, Reliance, trademarks of Tata Steel, trademarks of some big companies like Pfizer in, uh, you know, in pharma companies, Infosys. So these are trademarks things. Nestle, Nescafe, you can see Brew, Brew Coffees, right? ITC, you see ITC, Mark, in many of the things to it. Maggie, for example. Right. So these are all trademarks. Trademarks are the brand images of a particular entity which are registered. Why it is registered? So that it is exclusively used for the products of the entity. Nobody can else can copy the trademark. It is essential because if someone else is allowed to copy, 
the purchaser, the customer may be fooled. So therefore trademark. So the trademark is an asset because you don't allow anyone else to use that trademark. Development cost. So this is a very unique type of expenditure. Let us say for example, uh, you are doing research to find out what is the best medicine for a particular disease. Right. You are spending money to find out on the earth where oil is available. Now, actual oil extraction is a different cost, the production cost. But to find out places where oil is available or to study medicines to find out which will be the correct medicine for a particular disease. These are all costs incurred for the development of a product. Once the product is prototype is developed, then you start manufacturing. So these development costs have the objective of generating profit, but there are no specific assets. But the knowledge that you get out of development, which is secretively kept by you, research and etc., this is an important intangible asset. It is this asset that you show in the balance sheets. Goodwill, the customership, the good opinion in the minds of the customers of your business is a great value. Because your customers have a lot of faith in you, so whatever you sell, they buy it with strong confidence. So that customership increases your sales. Since that customership is your asset, it is treated as an asset in most of the business and it is an intangible asset. We are talking about depreciation, about largely tangible assets. Valuation of these assets. Normally for tangible assets, costless accumulated depreciation equals net book value. So there is a cost. Let us say, for example, you have bought a machinery for 50 lakhs of rupees. Its value is reduced because of usage by 10 lakh rupees. So its net book value will be 40 lakhs. Because when you buy, you say asserts DR to bank, 50 lakhs. And when you depreciate it, you will say depreciation DR to asserts by 10 lakhs. So the value of asserts is reduced by 10 lakhs, it's 40 lakhs. What is uh, depreciated cost? Net book value is a depreciated cost. A cost depreciated is a net book value. Sometimes companies because of technology, because of better maintenance, they revalue the assets. Asset is given a valuation above cost sometimes. Because it is very valuable, it is going to generate profit much higher. Usually apply to land and buildings. Since there is a limited amount of land and the number of buildings on that can also be get limited. So when you have a land, its value increases because the demand for the land is ever increasing. So you might have acquired a land for 40,000 rupees. Today it might be 40 lakhs of rupees. So will you treat the value of the asset land as 40,000 or 40 lakhs? Fair value is 40 lakhs. Your cost is 40,000. So it is better to revalue these assets at any point of time, depending upon the choice of the management. Revaluation is a choice for the company. Because the increase in the value of roughly about 36 lakhs or uh, 39 lakhs, 60,000 rupees to be precise, 40 lakhs minus 40,000 will be 39 lakhs, 60,000 is in a way profit. It is a capital profit. Profit not arising out of your business operation, but profit arising by revaluation of assets. So there are certain laws relating to that with which we are not concerned now. But revaluation may be necessary to put a fair value of the asset in the balance sheet. If used, revaluation must be updated regularly. All right. Cost of fixed asserts. What is the cost of fixed asserts? The purchase price that you have paid and all the expenses that you have incurred till the fixed asserts starts its business activities. 
the activities for which it was purchased. So you acquire a machine, say you are, your company is in Delhi, you acquire a machine from Bombay, you pay legal cost to transfer that in your name, sale deed, and then you pay transportation cost from Bombay to Delhi, you pay the freight, you pay the labor, you pay, the, pay for the insurance during the transit. All these costs are to be included to the purchase price to arrive at the cost of the fixed assets. Legal cost of acquisition and installation of that machinery in your production floor and commissioning costs. Many big machines, suppose you acquire machines from a company like Larson Chubro or a company from say USA or Japan. Such companies, you know, they take the responsibility of bringing the asset that you have purchased, bring it to your production floor, your companies, install them technically and show you how it starts production. That is known as a commission. So you might have to incur some cost during commissioning. There may be some waste of raw materials, waste of some products, waste of electricity or installation cost. You have to pay for some technical experts, etc. Because if you do not technically install it properly, then your production may not come all right. So what you want to do is a correct production activity from that asset. So all the cost incurred to bring the fixed asset to that position of producing as per your requirement are cost for acquiring the assets. This is a very important point that you should remember that many times at the time of the installation, some labor is engaged. Now, otherwise labor could be a revenue expenditure. But in this particular case, that the cost of labor incurred shall be a part of the cost of the fixed assets. Anything, any cost incurred with regard to fixed assets till it starts its production, its production activities are known as or to be included in the cost of the fixed assets. Now, having said the purchases, we come to yet another type of a capital expenditure which are incurred even after the purchase. You have purchased the machine, installed the machine, it is running for two years, then some new technology comes and it can be included, introduced or implanted into the machinery that you have purchased. So as its capacity increases, this would mean improvements to the existing capacity. Improvement expenditure may extend the asset's annual output capacity. Say it is manufacturing 1000 units a day. With this new component, it can make produce 500 units. Right. Increasing the economic life. Since its capacity increases, its ability to bring you economic benefits increases. That's what you mean by economic life. The economic life of an asset is the period during which it can generate profit for you. Reducing associated running costs. One of the reasons that you improve uh, by adding some new technology into the machine is to reduce the running cost. Say for example, you have a loom, right? You put a machine power loom, it generates, it uses electricity, but a new technology is come, which is a larger power, power loom. If you install it, it will run fast and the consumption of electricity comes down its capacity increases. So you may like to introduce that. Improving the quality of its products. The quality of the products can be seen in terms of the uh, example like a camera. In, in case of camera, you have got the pixel strength. All right. Now, newer camera is a cam. So in your machines, you want to install a camera to inspect the quality of light. Now, the quality of the camera itself can be improved upon by putting newer versions of the camera, which will tell you where does the quality has slightly deviated. So, immediately you can take the corrective actions. So, improving the quality of its outputs, cost incurred to improve on the asset's original conditions. These are the improvements and the cost incurred to Improve the original machine that you have bought or <clears throat> extension to the building, 
rebuilding shop fittings to attract new type of customers. These costs should be added to the original cost of the asset and depreciated over the remainder period of its life. That is, whatever you get the cost in your assets, you add these improvement costs and then recalculate your depreciation for the remaining period of your life. Say original machinery was purchased in 2010, it is useful till 2020, you have made improvement in 2012, from 2012 to 2020, the depreciation will be increased on the cost, including the improvement cost. <clears throat> As against the improvement cost, Every year you incur some expenditure relating to the machineries to maintain cost incurred to maintain. For example, you know, if you run a machine very fast, regularly, to produce to its full capacity, some of its small parts gets dried up, get uh, erased like washers, nuts, bolts, some plates. Right, some sievers. These are small spare parts which have got less useful life, number of life, years of life, than the machine itself. Let's say, for example, a washer. Washer may have two years' life, whereas a machine has 15 years' life. So, you have to every year periodically check up where is the damage in these spare parts, remove them. And replace with a new one. The new one costs you. So these are known as repairs. These are revenue expenditures. Unless repairs helps to improve the capacity of the machine, these repairs are revenue expenditures. Restoration. Sometimes because of wrong handling of the machine, sometimes because of some mishaps, machine gets damaged. So you spend some money to restore to its original condition. This is again a maintenance expenditure, a revenue expenditure. Cost incurred to maintain, repair or restore the asserts to its original condition, treated as an expense, that is a revenue expenditure, charged to the profit and loss account in the year in which it is incurred. For example, replacing roof damaged in storm, replacing the engine in a bus. Though of course the engine in the bus may not be a recurring one, but many repairs are recurring in nature. You change the oil, machine oil in some of the machines, which require to be changed every six months, every 12 months. These are all revenue expenditures. So while original cost and improvement cost are capital expenditures, these are revenue expenditures. Right. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Do like, comment and share. See you next time. Subscribe and hit the bell icon.